information, reference, photos, anything and everything I can. I, I look through, uh, through, through books, um, uh, online. But uh, like for example, this book here, like we might have in the library, it's complete waterfall studies. But it's a nice profile head of a green wing teal and a nice front on shot of a green wing teal. <coughs> so I, I just look for look through a lot of photos that I can find and, and uh, um, try to find a nice pleasing um, side shot or anything and that gives you some good reference. Um, <coughs> And uh, even some some back shots of, of photos too. You really don't need it in your pattern making, but it's something to keep in mind when you're drawing your pattern. If you want to have a wing out, you know, just to get an idea of doing a clay model and then making a pattern off of that. So sometimes it's easier with a clay model. Just a quick. It doesn't have to be right down to the, to the thing, but just give you a good idea, a good starting point. Uh, a lot of photos I find, uh, I go online and, and uh, Google or uh, search, and take in green wing teal, and then push images and just get thousands of pictures of green wing teal or any duck, bird, fish you can think of. So, um, so I, I, so I've got a bunch of photos here. This one's really small, but it's a really nice profile. Green wing teal with the higher head. That's kind of where I came up with the higher head green wing teal pattern that's up here. Um, here's one that's kind of more traditional with the lower head, but still a nice picture um, profile. Here's a nicer, bigger picture of a green wing teal with the higher head. A nice, it's got a nice profile of the body. And the and, head. Yeah, it's got an open mouth, so if you want to carve one of the open mouth, you could, otherwise you can just adjust it to a closed mouth one. But this is a nice, nice profile of a green wing teal. Um, much other nice ones here. I, I took a snapshot and I took, print this one off. It kind of doesn't show you much for a pattern making, but it gives you ideas and for painting or um, feather shapes and colors and such along the back, tail feathers, things like that. Print this picture off, kind of shows the under wing coloration and such. So you get a lot of information um, about these pictures. Another one in here. And here's one from behind that gives you a nice look of what, you, what they look like from behind. <coughs> and this picture is nice, uh, really shows nice the feather sculpting along the back to the turtles and such, right through the back. So it's a nice photograph showing that. Kind of really gives you an idea of all the feathers flow and lay out. Just something to keep in mind when you're drawing up the back. So how I've been doing the last few years, uh, I dropped my patterns. Is uh, um, I guess before before I got this projector thing. Here's uh, I found this laying in my shop. This is how I made the pattern for the farthest one away. I bought a picture of a green wing teal. I don't even remember how I got it in color, and I'm not sure how I blew this up. <laughs> I don't remember. I, I blew it up and to scale somehow, and uh, in color, and then I just kind of added the bottom uh, three quarters of an inch or so to give me the water line, because this must have been on the water line. And this, you know, this profile showed a lot of feather layout, there's a nice side profile shot, and that's how I developed the pattern on the one farthest away. So, so that's one way of doing it. Then 
And all I did, I'm sure, is I found a picture. It doesn't have to be in color. You can get a black and white shot and um, you got access to a copier or a copy center or something like that. Um, what I do is take a study bill. Try to use the study bill. Just one thing that's going to be kind of constant in the size, or at least get you close, is the length of the study bill. So if you uh, take your photograph and blow up, you have a nice profile of a bird you're going to do, just blow up the image, you know, a lot of those top images you can go 10%, 20%, 22%, 23, 28, 42, just get it blown up to where, where it's pretty close to the same length, and you know, it's a pretty good chance you're, you're, you're in the ball game, you know, you're pretty close to the size of the, the duck that you need. So, so I'm basically doing that with this, this, uh, projector, um, only I'm not going to a copier and playing around with percentages, I'm just moving this back and forth to get it uh, the size I need. So uh, we'll go ahead and draw one up here I'm just not sure which is going to be the bigger picture or the smaller picture that's going to work here. So I'm going to start with the smaller one and see what happens. Someone mind getting the light over, please? gives you a, a general idea of how to <coughs> kind of get that top profile. And then if you got enough paper, you just take it, fold it on the center line and trace the other side, and you'll end up with a perfect, perfect uh, top pattern. Both sides will be the same. primaries here, and what you want to do, come out of here, come back here. So, let's come off. You want to expose if you know the dream wing tail has that pretty green spectrum. You want to expose that, that's just kind of coming off here. And so I thought you just kind of want to have a feather kind of covering in there. And then you get 
exposed on that green. This is the, the bottom side of the side pocket. But uh, in the pattern, you really don't need that. You just want to know that you want to do that. Um, for example, when I'm talking about this pattern here, I don't have it drawn in, but, but I carve it in. So what I'm talking about is this green speculum here. So it's something you can add in as you're carving, but you kind of want to have a thought or thinking about it. You ought to know it right away when you start carving to make sure you leave enough wood there to do that. But, but uh, that's just some different things you can do, you know, this is the pattern for this cutout, but it's something you just added as you go. Um, so the differences between these two patterns are uh, are mainly in the back. Um, if you look at the back backs of them, the primary feathers are up on this one and they're dropped on this one, and then I got all these these. This, from this wing and stuff, or scapular turtles kind of dropped down where these are all higher. And it might be easier to see it on the decoys themselves here. So if you can kind of see it, it's not painted yet, so it's probably not helping, but, but the, this, so this whole back is exposed on this one, where that one you really don't see the back other than a little bit of the tail coverts. But the rest of this is uh, dropped. The primary feathers are dropped. And this one, the primaries are up up and crossed, and tertial scapulars are all up here. See a little bit of the wrong. <coughs> Any questions on find that tracer machine here in one of the shops in the city? Yeah. Dick Blick, I bought that a couple of years ago. I think they're 60, 70 bucks, I think. More than that. Are they? <coughs> okay. They get a catalog. I don't know if they're being on sale. I bought that one. I don't pay that much money. They're, they're, I think they're, they're under, under $100, I think. Oh, okay. They're less than $100. Right? <coughs> the copy machines work too. Tom, have you found a good way to use um, DVDs or video, well, DVDs in particular on television, uh, to be able to transfer the image off from there other than drawing on your television set? I've tried that, but it just doesn't work. That didn't work for me. So. I got the old duck line videos, you know, and they're not real clear to begin with, and then you pause them. And and when they're paused, they don't sit perfectly still. At least those, I think the VCR tapes don't. Maybe a DVD. Right, well, like Nature had a uh, special on ducks a couple years ago. Um, I recorded it on a DVD, and there's some beautiful footage on it. Oh, really? But I can't, well, the, the uh, gold and I scratch in its chin. Um, <coughs> I was trying to figure out how in the world does he do that. Yeah. and sit on the water. It shows that, but it does, I, I haven't been able to figure out a good way to transfer that there. image mm -hmm. off the television on the paper. Yeah. You could put it on your, I've put it on my computer, and then you can do screenshots to take a screenshot of just that instant. Put, put the disc in the computer itself? Yeah, uh, and then you can print it off, but I, I was it the documentary? Yeah. The, yeah. I was doing that, and even some of those motion shots were even on a stop action, when you take a screenshot, it, they're blurry and they weren't <clears throat> real great. But, uh, but yeah, you can take a screenshot and then print it on your printer and copy it from there. Or you can take your digital camera and just take a picture with it right on the screen. It should catch it pretty quickly. Wait a minute, you're talking about taking a digital photograph of the television? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's too simple. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can pull photos off the internet. 